Welcome back to the Fort Johnson podcast, where we bring you the inside wire for the latest news stories and insights from the heart of the Army. I'm your host, and today we have a special episode that I know you're going to find fascinating. Now, at Fort Johnson, training is always at the core of what we do, and this week we're diving deep into the intense and critical preparation that our military police are undergoing. Joining us today are some of the key leaders on the ground, the ones making it all happen from the 519th Military Police Battalion. Italian. These soldiers are the backbone of our training efforts, and they're here to give us the behind-the-scenes look at the rigorous drills, the strategy, and the mindset that goes into preparing soldiers to keep the peace and maintain security both home and abroad. From weapons qualifications and tactical movement to detainee operations and convoy security, the 519th MPs are ensuring our soldiers are always ready for whatever comes their way. Whether it's safeguarding the installation or deploying on critical missions overseas, their training never stops, and neither does their commitment. So grab a cup of coffee, settle in, and let's get into it. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Whenever you are watching our podcast, I am Jeff England from the Fort Johnson Public Affairs Office, and we are here in the Fort Johnson Podcast Studios. Today with me, I have two soldiers from the 519th MP Battalion. Uh, we have Sta uh, Staff Sergeant Jackie Tate and Specialist Dalton Taylor. Hey, hey, how you guys doing? Doing good, sir. Good, sir. Awesome. You know, uh, did you need coffee or anything uh, to, to wake up? I mean, you guys are always hard at work and you seem awfully tired. No, I'm good. <laughs> no, thank you. So you guys, how long have you, how long have you been in uh, the Army? I've been in for 16 years. 16 years? Yes, sir. You're almost, you're almost done. Almost done, yeah. <laughs> All right. I pretty much uh, just started. I got three years this month. So. Well, let, let take it from take it from Jaquez and me. Uh, Twenty years goes by really quick. Yes, I'm sure he doesn't even remember uh, uh, the first couple of years in there. It's like, what was I doing back then? <laughs> oh, believe me, I remember <laughs> every minute, huh? <laughs> So I hear that we've got a bunch of training going on uh, with your unit uh, today. Uh, well, today is last week. I mean, this comes out on Sundays. Uh, so you have a training over at the commissary. You have training at the uh, the weapons qualification courses and all that stuff. The the one that I the, that I heard uh, that's going on at the commissary seems really interesting. Do you know what's going on over there? Uh, yeah. Um, basically, what's going on in the commissary, we're going to have different teams coming in. They're going to be assessing uh, UXOs. We're going to be going through active shooter type scenarios and different things like that over the, the time frame. And uh, what's the UXO for all those out there? You know, not everybody knows what all these acronyms and initials are. <laughs> Uh, if we have like a bomb threat and what we're going to do in the event that that happens, sir. Ah, cool. So any bad guys uh, over there at the commissary? <laughs> uh, well, we have uh, role players that are going to be there uh, and we're going to have to be able to assess the, that over time. Cool. Cool. So what and uh, then also you have uh, you're going over to the, the shooting range. Yep. To qualify, what do you guys qual? What uh, what weapons are you qualifying with? Well, we'll have M17s. We'll What's have, that? Uh, it's just a pistol. Oh, the 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 model 1912, uh, big old 45s. Oh, and definitely not, not that. <laughs> not that. Uh, and we'll be getting to shoot the M4s, and they're going to be able to shoot the shotguns as well. Oh, the shotguns. Have you got to shoot the shotgun yet? Uh, I just got back from SRT school. We shot it there. Okay, yeah. Oh, that is so cool. And um, so. Uh, how many times have you had to to uh, qualify with your weapon? Oh, I mean, it's once a year, two two times a year. I mean, as quite it, often. Is it multiple weapons or just the just the pistol? It's multiple weapons. Yeah, which one's your favorite? Probably the M4. I'm a rifle guy. You like that? Yeah. Have you done the uh, shotgun yet? Uh, yes, sir. I haven't shot like a qualification with it, but uh, breaching doors and stuff with it. Done That's that. what I was thinking. It's yeah. like big. Just shoot the just shoot the door handle off. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Do you guys also have to like uh, know how to kick in the doors and and use that battering ram and all, everything like that? Yes, sir. Uh, like well, we have the SRT. He yeah. can probably tell you more about that. Ooh, what's an SRT? An SRT is a special reaction team. Uh, oh, is that kind of like SWAT? I guess yeah. <laughs> it's like can... the military SWAT team. <laughs> I guess something like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I'm trying to come up with a, <laughs> a, a acronym for the military SWAT. M SWAT SWAT SWAMPT. 
Swamp. 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 <laughs> it's a swamp team. <laughs> so you guys are... So uh, when was the last time you, you qualified? I had to shoot three different qualifications last week, yep. last Monday. Oh, wow. We were all at the range all last week. Oh, that must have been hot. Definitely hot. <laughs> <laughs> it's more the humidity than anything. Oh, I hate this humidity. Oh, it's horrible. But it's uh, at the same time, all the soldiers, we had you know a great time. Uh, we were also doing training, uh, train up for the actual exercise out there as well. So we were moving around throughout the whole time, getting them ready to you know do this LEX. So it's basically the exercises to do evaluations of what's going to be you know how they're going to operate on the road once they actually get on the road. Nice. Now, uh, when it comes to these uh, trainings and exercises and stuff, how often or how uh, how often do they occur? How uh, common are they? How common how common are the actual real world things that this this training uh, is getting you involved with? So we go through training uh, every day um, when the soldiers are doing just regular day to day performing our operations. We do training. Uh, we'll have like a scenario set up that they'll have to show up for. So we're constantly training to ensure that they're not, you know, either getting complacent or something like that. What we're doing now, it's an annual thing, an annual evaluation or requirement. And a lot of the times um, different entities are allowed to come in and assist as well as like when we do an active shooter uh, once a year. Um, it's just to make sure that the training that we've been doing all year is being assessed on what we need to improve on going uh, forward. Nice. Now, uh, the uh, for the most part, what is the normal day of uh, of an MP? You want to take that on? Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, it, it depends. Uh, you could be on the road or you could be, like a, like you said, like a normal nine to five is what we call platoon duty. Uh, platoon duty is just like everybody else's normal day of work, 6.30 PT, 9 a.m. come back until training's done. Uh, and then you have Shift work, which could be days, swings, or mids, depending on what, what you have. Uh, and then pretty much just roll. Now, are you guys manning the gates also, or is that uh, is that the security? That's I know it's the civilians, but uh, the military, the soldiers that are out working the gates, are they all MPs, or are they uh, actually tasked by different units, uh, at like a rotational kind of thing? They're tasked by different units. Um, they do still get the training. They'll go to the range. Uh, they'll qualify on the same uh, weapon systems that we have. Uh, and anytime something happens at the gate, they'll call for a patrol to arrive on the scene. Yeah, we hear the uh, we hear the sirens go by. <laughs> <laughs> Probably quite often. Now, the uh, oh, what about uh, the barriers? You guys get special training on the barriers and all that stuff? Uh, yes, we actually um, did the gate runner. Did you guys? Did you get mm -hmm. to do that? You want to talk about that? Oh, oh that sounds okay. fun. Well, when you go through um, LEC, it's when you first get to the duty station. You have to go through the law enforcement course, learn all your different job duties and stuff like that. Uh, one of the things you do is go through the gate guard course, and um, you'll have like gate runner training. It's kind of like how this is set up. You have like role players. You have people come down there. You go through the process of that, and you get barrier training and everything like so that. So it's uh, this that's like real world kind of looking stuff. Yeah, if if, if uh, something happens like off posts are coming onto the installation, and we have to show up, we have to still make sure that if we have to cover down on some gates because we do cover the gates sometimes um, when there's entities or there's units that they can't uh, provide or something like that. We'll have a couple of our soldiers on the gate. And so that's why during their um, training process, they go through the whole uh, aspect of being a gate guard so that they know what to do if we do have a gate, a gate runner. Now, I, have, I mean, I've actually heard the story. Uh, there was this one uh, gate guard, uh, some guy like pulled a gun on her and then ran the gate and she was able to hit the, the barrier and then went out and actually took him out and unalived the guy. <laughs> Yeah, uh, that did it. Something like that did it happen. <laughs> something like that, but not here, not 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 here. So, yeah. <laughs> so the, what you're hearing about? I mean, things like that do happen on the yeah. gate. It's unfortunate. Uh, a lot of the times when we do have gate runners, sometimes it's just uh, people are trying to go to Starbucks and they don't realize that this is a military installation. And Oops. So they're not aware that they have to, you know, provide any identification or something like that, and so they they just drive through. For the most part, we we can stop them before they get to the barrier, but. 
um, if they get hit with a barrier, then, you know, it's just an <laughs> unfortunate event. Yeah. Especially if you're going pretty fast. Yeah. <laughs> those, those things don't give way. <laughs> no. I've always, I've always been worried about going out since they, they come up at that angle. Mm -hmm. Uh, if I'm on my way out and they pop up or something, I'm going to go up and over the ramp like a, like a jump or something. They told a story about that, but I don't know if that was a real thing. But they said, like, some pizza delivery person went over it, but I don't know if that was real. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so what would you say uh, your favorite part of your job is? You can go first. I always, uh, get, I always get one question in here that's always, like, really tough to answer. <laughs> I, I wouldn't say it's, it, it's tough. Uh, favorite part of being in the military or favorite part of being, like, a Well, let's go with officer. both. We've got the time. Okay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Favorite part of being in the military, definitely for me, is the soldiers. Uh, without them, I wouldn't have a job. Um, and you just get to the, be around a lot of different people, characteristics, and you learn a lot about yourself in this job, for sure, if you have the you know capacity to be a leader, um, to take advice, to also be, you know, not always a chief. But <laughs> we always want to be chiefs, but sometimes you just got to, you got to maintain what it is to take care of yourself and your soldiers. Um, and we all become like a family. So as far as being an MP, um, I love every aspect. I've done a lot of different parts of being an MP. People just think like, oh, we just patrol the roads. But uh, I worked on a drug suppression team. I've been a part of physical security uh, and different things like that, like we're learning different training. So I just love every aspect of really being an MP. To be yeah, that's, it's like not every job in the military uh, translates into a civilian job. But I think this one is probably one of the ones that, that will translate directly, yes, per sir. perfectly over. Yes, sir. So how about you? Uh, for being an MP, it's probably definitely uh, helping people. Um, and constantly, you know, every call, uh, they say it a lot in training is majority of your calls is somebody else's worst day. Mm -hmm. So seeing people on their worst day and trying to help them, that's probably my favorite part. Uh, then military-wise is... Uh, just kind of like he said, just the people, all the people you meet, the information that you get that you wouldn't get anywhere else, um, and the experiences and the test, the constant test of who am I, what can I do, and stuff like that. So yeah, that's always uh, that's always gotten me. It's uh, because you've only been in for three years. Three years, uh, so you're about 21 years old. 22. 22. Yes, so I was close, <laughs> uh, and you've been a cop for three years already. Yes, sir. So like on the outside. On the outside, you have to be 21 to be a cop, but in the military, you, you've already got three years, and you, yeah. you're barely old enough to become a cop on the outside. So yes, sir, yeah. you're you're ahead of the you're ahead of the game. <laughs> they got a lot of confidence in you. Yeah, I guess so, yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> so, what made you guys want to? Did you always want to come into the army and be an MP, or uh, did you dream of being in the Air Force? Uh, and, you know, <laughs> <laughs> no, did you always want to come into the army and be an MP, or was there were there other jobs, or were there ever was there ever a doubt in your mind that you chose the right career field? Uh, I had basketball scholarships, um, but I got hurt in the process. I oh. always wanted to join the military. Um, I wasn't sure which uh, branch I wanted to join, but I also knew like it's a family tradition, and so uh, that 18 mark, you know, every one of us like you're joining some form of the military to keep on the family name. And I originally was going to go to the Marines, and my mom was like, yeah, we're not doing that. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Army it was for me, but being an MP definitely was always the always the goal, always the job. It's nice to have a goal. Yeah. How about you, Dalton? Uh, I actually didn't enlist to be an MP. I enlisted to be uh, to go to selection, psychological operations, and uh, ended up didn't making it, didn't make the cut. And then I got reclassed to this, which I don't regret. Um I like what I do. Yeah, yeah the uh, I'd have to say uh, the favorite part of uh, being a cop is playing with the sirens and lights and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so when you get here, is how long are? I mean, I know the 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 fire departments on like really long shifts, 24, 48 hour, forty eight hours on, uh, something like that, and then mm. a d two days off, two days on, two days off. But they're working all kinds of shifts. Uh, are yours more normalized, or, and then just rotates every so often? Uh, a normal, I, like you said, the uh, the 
the normal day starts at six, you go out, you do your PT, and then you come back to work at nine. And is it, and then from there, is it nine to five and, or is it like nine to nine? And no, it's nine to five. It's just, uh, just regular time frames. When we work shifts though, like right now we're currently working 12s, um, to assist with what's going on with the training and everything like that. And we'll continue that until if there's a special event, we'll change the hours. But for the most part, we work like eight, sh eight hour shifts. Um, they'll either do PT before or after that shift. So the um, now you've been 16 years. That's a that's a good chunk of change yes, to sir. to be doing that. Uh, what's one of the uh, the weirdest the weirdest uh, scenarios you were ever in? Weirdest scenarios. <laughs> um, well, I was up in Alaska for a while, and it is true. A lot of the, the younger kids try to emulate movies right and uh <laughs> a lot of tongues getting stuck to poles so oh. <laughs> <laughs> that scenario it happens a lot for whatever reason i don't know why people think like that's the funny thing to do or having to show up a lot of times people will uh they'll get in their bathing suits in the middle of you know negative degree weather and want to take a picture in front of a sign <laughs> um and then we get called out because you know someone's got hypothermia or something like that so <laughs> alaska is a is a crazy crazy place to to be for sure. <laughs> we got a person in a bathing suit stuck to a pole. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Dalton, you have any any uh, fun stories that you've had on uh, on duty? Well, I just got back from like a rotation in Germany. Uh -huh. And uh, probably really the only thing kind of funny like that would be had like one stack of uh, bar it was kind of looks like barracks, but they're uh, on post housing for them there. And uh that one was condemned, but there was a window that you could get into. So all the kids would get into it and it kind of led to like a underground, like tunnel system. So you always, at least once a month, you had to go in there and find them with no lights and stuff like that. So it was pretty funny, but that's really kind of, <laughs> I could totally see you guys just putting on the, like the, the night vision goggles, walking in there going like, <laughs> we see you. It's like, ah! <laughs> so any, uh, any emergencies that you've been on that just like made you just reinforce the uh, idea that you picked the right career field? Yeah, well, I've definitely been to some, you know, you get a lot of heart-wrenching. Yeah. I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, doing this job, it, it takes a lot. It takes a, a, a very stable mind. And, you know, there's a lot of calls that we go to, especially whenever we're dealing with other soldiers and stuff like that. Um, you know, there's just traumatic things that happen over time. But I would say you get the the – the reinforcement of knowing that we pick the right job whenever you get that gratitude of seeing like, you know, we, we go with fire and stuff like that. If something happens or someone house, someone's house is like burned down and, you know, we've, we've gotten the opportunity to help them and get them out of that situation and just seeing, you know, how they are and grateful and just different situ situations and scenarios. It's like, we do this job for a reason and it's definitely to protect everyone on this installation. So yeah, absolutely. And you guys do a great job. I mean, I've never had a problem, but <laughs> <laughs> see, uh, one of the things, the videos, you know, I watch a lot of videos on online YouTube and stuff like that. And I see these, um, these, they're, to me, they're troublemakers. Hmm. Uh, the auditors, they oh. call themselves, we're auditors. We we're auditing and making sure it's like, no, you're not, you're causing trouble. Mm -hmm. You're making somebody's job or just giving them a hard time. Uh, are, do we have those problems around here? I don't think so. I, don't uh, I mean, I think I've seen some down in Florida, uh, tr you know, taking pictures of the gate and it's like, you, know, you don't want to yeah. do that. But uh, so we're on public streets and it's like, it's beyond that. I, I have, I've dealt with that. I dealt with that whenever uh, I was at West Point. A lot of times they want to take pictures and stuff like that because they're historical and um, but it, you just have to take, you know, every situation, you know, and just make sure that you understand what they are allowed to do and what they aren't. And, you know, we're not allowed to take pictures of the gate and stuff like that. I think everyone has a right to, you know, say what they want and do what they, they feel is within their rights and stuff. And uh, we just have to make sure that we maintain our professional um, etiquette whenever we're working with anyone. And as long as things don't get out of hand, I mean, it really isn't an issue. If you take it at face value, you know. Yeah, we should we should just plan one of those videos, and I'll, I'll come out and I'll audit you, and everything will go perfectly great. And it's like, yeah, look at us, we're awesome. <laughs> That'd be pretty funny. So, what's the uh, what's what when you get a call? Which one is the one you dread the most? 
dread the most? Because I've, you know, uh, my dad was a cop for like over 30 years. And, uh, and he always said that the worst, the worst ones to go out on or the most dangerous ones to go out on were the domestics, mm -hmm. the domestic calls. And, uh, you know, we don't like having those calls and, and we don't like anything happening like that. We do have a lot of, uh, training and, um, classes and all that stuff to help combat that and make it not happen. But you know, it happens. And are those, is that the same here on post? It's like one of the more dangerous calls. You just don't know what's going on. Yeah. I mean, when you go into any situation, especially domestic, um, sometimes the information is misconstrued. Or, you know, we could think we're going to something that could possibly already become physical or just verbal, but uh, all those situations, we just have to make sure we all are on the same page when we show up and we just take control of the scene and stuff. I think for me, the worst calls are the calls that involve children. Um, being a father, it's just, yeah, it, definitely those are the calls that are heart-wrenching. Yeah, heart not know what we're going into. Um, what about you? What do you think? Uh, definitely the same. Like, just like you said, a domestic is pretty hard to deal with. Um, There's lots of emotions that go on it, with, with, with that kind of stuff. Definitely. Uh, but... Really, I think it would have to be any any call, like you said, that involves kids. You know, that stuff's hard to see, uh, hard to deal with. But um, really, probably the hardest to deal with me is uh, probably just the paperwork after any call. <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah, no yeah. job is done until the paperwork is yeah, done. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I, that's what I keep hearing. It's like all these uh, the people on online. It's like, oh, the the cops just want to hurt us and, and mm. blah blah blah. It's like, no, they don't. There's too much paperwork. <laughs> <laughs> they don't want to do the paperwork. So uh, how long are, you know, speaking of paperwork, the uh, when you do have to write a report, how long are these reports? Oh, they going can vary. On? So it's like, what's the longest one you've done? Well, I mean, when I first started not really knowing how to work any of it, those things could take me days, yeah, two hours, <laughs> three hours, like a whole shift or something. But, uh, you know, you get a lot of help from other people because you got to get back on the road. You got other things to deal with. Um but they could they could really vary. You could go to a you know a dog call or something. You just gotta input the stuff. That's really it, and it takes thirty minutes. Or yeah, those dog calls are really weird. I mean, how do they dial? Okay, <laughs> <laughs> somebody like, dials nine one one. I have no thumbs. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's when they text you is when you got to worry about it. I think it's more they're just uh, people don't want to see dogs out there because it's so hot. Yeah. You know, and a lot of dogs, they do get that heat exhaustion really quick. So. Absolutely. And it's not just the, it's not just the animals. Uh, we've been seeing a lot of stories about people uh, leaving kids in the car. Oh, it's yeah. Like that's, oh, that's, that's horrible. Yeah. So it's like, okay, so we've got, we've got all this training going on and it goes on throughout the year. Um, mm -hmm. And did, did I ask you what the, uh, what your favorite training was? Because I've so. meant to, I, that was like one of the first ones I wanted to ask. Like, what's your favorite training? Oh, what's uh, your favorite? Well, the scenarios that they're going over is, um, well, you were that you've done it so far. I've done I the mean, past two. I'll let days. him talk more to it because uh, he's actually been, you know, involved. Yeah, it's old news with you. No, not old news. <laughs> it's just so. It's just uh, I get to, I got to actually observe the training, which was very good for me also to just be like on the outside and see, you know, are we doing what we need to be doing as far as training all of our soldiers, to pro you know, properly. And, you know, are they soaking this information in? And for the most part, they're doing definitely very well. So I'll let him talk more to uh, what um, they so, look like. So far this week, it's an LEX. It's kind of like a big culminating event. That just means a law enforcement exercise. Uh, so the past, I think the past three days has mm -hmm. been um, just different types of calls and stuff like that that you would go to. And they're full scale. Uh, you have all the assist you need. Like, say one of them is a... One of the lanes is a DUI lane, and you're working on all your SFSTs, which are field sobriety tests, uh, stuff like that. And, you know, sometimes they try to change the scenarios up so not everybody's getting the same one so you can't come back and, you know, tell your buddy, hey, just do this, you'll be all right. <laughs> uh, so, like, sometimes in that lane that may have something that looks like drugs or something in the vehicle. So then you would go through what you need to be done or what, what needs to be done uh, you'd call up and ask for, ask for K9 or something like that. And then you have that, uh, at your disposal and K9 will come out. Um, but really like the past three days has been just different types of calls, different types of things that you've done and been trained on over and over again, uh, to, like you said, test your proficiency and evaluate yourself. And then, uh, these next two days, like you said, are going to be at 
the old commissary, and they're just kind of like active threats uh, and UXO, the unexploded ordinance, and stuff like that. So, yeah, it's really, really the LEX. You guys have to cordon off everything and mm -hmm. not use your radio around the UX. I mean, yeah, I, I remember all that stuff. <laughs> um, the training that they've done so far or that we're doing is um, uh, high-risk traffic stops, uh, domestic violence calls, um, like you said, the SFSTs, seeing if you can evaluate the cues of someone who could be possibly under the influence of anything. Um, and then there was just a regular... Um, traffic accident so dealing with someone who hit somebody else and then see how you interact with them yeah i was uh i was involved in one of those uh, a couple years ago or i don't have to say more than five years ago now i don't know but, you at fault no actually no i we were it, i was on my way out the gate and you know somebody just rear-ended me i mean oh. it was no big deal and uh i had a a, a big old truck with the big old trailer hitch on there so <laughs> so she rammed her uh radiator right into the, the the trailer hitch no damage to my my truck but hers was like whoo and, and she felt bad and it's like oh my gosh oh my gosh and it's like nah don't worry about it uh, and the cop showed up well the civilian cop showed up oh, and okay. and uh, it's like they look at me it's like what'd you do now <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it's like nah don't worry about it I, no damage to my car, but hers. Yeah. It's like, oh wow, look at that. <laughs> I guess I guess the trailer hitch did its job. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> so you got that. So how you looking at? Um, so you, I already know you're gonna reenlist because <laughs> 16 years. You you're on the downhill I'm slope now. <laughs> There's no reenlisting for me. I, I, I'm on the home stretch at this point. Nice. So are you gonna stay here for for your last enlistment? Uh, well, I'm. I think I have four years right now. I've been here for about a year, so it just depends on if they want to send me somewhere else or keep me here. Um, if I get to stay here longer, I'd like to be an OC at some point. Ooh, that'd be fun. Yeah, I, that that was my ultimate goal of coming to this installation uh, was to be a squad leader and then try to be an OC. So how, do you have to go through like an application process or is it like you have to wait for an opening and then apply for it like a job? I think so. I think you have to wait for an opening. Um but we'll see what happens. Yeah, that's how that's that's kind of how it happens in the guard too. <laughs> National <laughs> Guard, you have to wait for an opening to get promoted. <laughs> it's like ah. But uh, yeah, one of the coolest things that I got to do was they were training us for uh, crowd control, and uh, they said, okay, we ha you have to come up and frisk this person, and let's see how many uh, how many things you miss. And it's like this, <laughs> the guy goes up and frisks him, and it's like, all right, you get everything. It's like yeah. I'm like, uh-huh. He pulled out like 15 things, 15 <laughs> other things hidden all over his body. It's like, this is why you don't do it <laughs> like <Yeah>. that. <laughs> so how about you, uh, Dalton? You're going to be, uh, you're looking at uh, trying to re-enlist? Well, uh, I'm married, so that's a kind of a decision I would like to make with my family. I, so your I, wife's going to make the decision for you. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wear the pants, she just picks them out. Yeah, uh, there's but, nothing wrong with that. <laughs> but no, that's a, that's a big decision on what we want to do or where we want to where we want to go and stuff like that. So I haven't really made that decision yet. I still got time. Yeah, you do. Uh, just, you know, I used to be, I used to be the, the anti-recruiter until I cross-trained into a job <laughs> that I loved. And then I became like the, the biggest cheerleader for, for the military and staying in for, and oh man, I got uh, what, what I call grass is greener syndrome. Mm -hmm. And I thought I'd have a better life on the outside. It's like, no, <laughs> for the next, I got out and it's like immediately knew my mistake. It's like, no, 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 no. Three years, three years <laughs> tried to get back in every which way and they wouldn't take prior enlisted. So it's like, hey, don't make the same mistake I do. <laughs> Might take you now. <laughs> <laughs> I, now I'm broken. <laughs> so, now, <laughs> so now it's like, you know, if I went back in now, I wouldn't get paid. <laughs> But the the uh, the overall greatness that you guys are doing out there, we we really appreciate all the work that you guys are doing, and keep up keep up the great work. Thank you. Uh, keep up the great training. You know, train hard, play hard. I guess that's is it. Work no, train hard, play hard. Is it? Yeah, that's what it is. Train right? hard, work hard. Train us. hard, work hard. <laughs> nah, that's too much. That's too much work. <laughs> but you guys work too much anyway. And be sure, hey, you know, when you're out doing your patrol, be sure, you know, stop by. I, I see you guys come into our parking lot all the time, usually pulling somebody over or, <laughs> or um, just taking up my spots. And stuff. 
<laughs> Come on over, say hi to us and stuff. I, I appreciate you guys coming in. Yes, sir. Uh, Dalton, Jaquise, I appreciate it. And uh, I hope you, hopefully you guys come back. Soon. I'd like to see you again after you re-enlist. Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> Thank you for having us. All right. Thanks a lot. I'm Jeff England. Yeah, anyway, I'm Jeff England from the Fort Johnson Public Affairs Office. You've been watching the Fort Johnson Podcast. We appreciate all of our viewers and listeners out there. Please, if you have any comments or if you'd like to see something on our show, uh, give us a give us comment down below. Uh, be sure to hit that subscribe and notification bell, and we will be seeing you and listening at you again later. That was easy.